In many organizations, the accounting staff in the accounts payable, accounts receivable, treasury, finance, payroll, and audit departments execute basic bookkeeping tasks as part of their daily routines. This might involve the processing of invoices, cash application of payments, bank reconciliation, billing, preparation of payroll, and various auditing tasks, to name a few. These basic bookkeeping solutions or bookkeeping business, if you will, provide the very foundation for the group's work as well as the financial viability of the organization. For that reason, I wanted to take a deeper dive into the relationship between these tasks and the basic accounting financial functionality of any organization. So let's level, level the playing field with by starting with what is bookkeeping. Very simply put, bookkeeping is the recording of financial transactions, information that ultimately ends up on the financial statements and tax returns. Generally, it is considered part of the accounting function in anything but the very smallest of businesses. In small business, it may be most of the accounting function, but it is definitely not accounting, but rather the foundation of a strong financial and accounting system. In accounts payable, this might include processing invoices and setting up vendors in the master vendor file. In accounts receivable, this might include recording payments received, doing cash application, and billing. In payroll, this might re include recording hours worked and payments made to employees, not to mention taxes. In treasury, this might include bank reconciliations and recording wire transfers made. The person performing these basic bookkeeping tasks might be called an invoice processor, an accounts payable associate, accounts receivable analyst, treasury analyst, clerk, etc. So how does the bookkeeping function work? The bookkeeping function starts with the documentation. This might be a purchase order, a receiving document, an invoice, etc. It also might be a wire transfer request. This source documentation is key in creating accurate records. Other source documents you might be familiar with might include bank statements, credit card statements, and credit memos. This information needs to be classified or categorized. This is generally done through the use of GL codes, also called general ledger codes. In the accounting space, we sometimes refer to all these codes as the chart of accounts. There should only be one chart of accounts for every company. Everyone must use the same chart of accounts. That's why it is important that good processes are put in place for establishing the chart of accounts in the first place and adding new GL codes where needed. Speaking of GL codes, what are GL codes? General ledger codes are numerical names you assign to an account. These are unique identification codes that allow businesses to classify and track their financial activities. Activity. You may sometimes hear this referred to as a GL account number. Use of GL codes leads to more fi accurate financial statements, greater visibility in spend, which results in better budgeting and tax reporting, along with increased efficiency and a reduction in risk. Bank statement reconciliations. The next step involves bank statement reconciliation. Bank statement reconciliations are a responsibility that bookkeepers will sometimes take on. Typic responsibility for the bank statement is to ensure among other things, that all checks cleared. This reconciliation is often the step where a fraud might be uncovered if the organization has been targeted and the fraud has so far gone undetected. While the standard best practice for bank reconciliations used to be to do it on a monthly basis, thanks to new aggressive electronic payment frauds, bank accounts should now be checked and reconciled on a daily basis. The benefit of this is that it is much easier to reconcile a day's activity and try and find a mistake than try to try and find one that's buried within 30 days of activity. Bank reconciliations are typically, but not always, handled in accounts payable, treasury, or accounting, depending on which group has the bandwidth to handle them while incorporating appropriate separation of duties. The next issue to be addressed is what type of bookkeeping or accounting to use, single entry or double entry. What is double entry, bookkeeping, or accounting? Most ongoing businesses will choose to use double entry bookkeeping or accounting. Why? Single entry bookkeeping only records one entry for each transaction, usually in a cash account. It's often set up in a spreadsheet, uh, but it can oversimplify your finances while providing an incomplete financial picture. 
An example of single entry bookkeeping in your personal life would be your check register where you record cash in and cash out. In double entry bookkeeping, every financial transaction has an equal and opposite effect in at least two different accounts. This facilitates the fundamental accounting concept of assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. The sum of all debits must equal the sum of all credits. As a credit is an entry that increases a liability account or decreases an asset account. A debit is the opposite. It is an entry that increases the asset an asset account or decreases a liability account. Let me give you a simple example, a common one. Let's say a business loan of $125,000. The loan would be recorded in both the debit account and the credit account. The cash or asset account would be debited $125,000 and the debt the liability account is credit, credited by $125,000. Notice the debit and credit accounts will equal one another. The single or double entry decision is related to whether you are using cash accounting or accrual accounting. Now, before we get to the differences between cash and accrual accounting and how you are probably using accrual accounting for your personal man money management, if you're getting any value from this talk, I'd love it if you would hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you are getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks to everybody who has hit that thumbs up button. What's the difference between cash accounting and accrual accounting? Accrual accounting records revenue and expenses when the transaction occurred, which is usually before funds are received or dispersed. Cash basis accounting records revenue and expenses when cash related to those transactions actually is received or dispersed. It does not recognize transactions that have occurred, but the funds issue has not occurred. This is where accruals come into play as by incorporating that data you get a more realistic picture of an organization's true financial picture. Think about it like this. If you look at your bank balance the day before you pay your bills, you might look quite wealthy on a cash basis anyway. You might look like you've got a lot of cash to spend, but hopefully and probably you know better. After you pay your rent due in a few days and that stack of bills sitting on your desk waiting to be paid, if you're anything like me, there's not a whole lot left. Realistically, if you want to estimate how much cash you really have, You'd add up all those outstanding bills, that's the equivalent of your accruals, and subtract it from your bank balance. Let me give you a very simple example from real life with some real numbers. The day after you get paid and before you pay your bills, let's say your bank balance is a hefty $3,500. That's your cash balance, okay? But it's not really all of the money you have. When you add up your expenses, your rent, your credit card bills, cell phones, etc., you might have $2,500 worth of bills. You might also estimate that you'll need another $300 for food and $75 for gas until your paycheck arrives. So your total expend, expected expenses are the $2,500 for your outstanding bills, $300 for the food, $75 for gas, bringing that total to $2,875. That means you really only have $625 to spend despite your cash balance being shown at $3,500. By the, by the way, GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles in the U.S., requires accrual account for obvious reasons. The next issue that often gets raised when discussing bookkeeping and accounting is who prepares the financial statements. In only the very smallest organizations does the bookkeeper create the financial statement. But, and this is just as important, just because you're not responsible for preparing the financial statements, this does not mean you shouldn't understand what they are and what goes into the creation of these all important documents. In most organizations, the bookkeeper will enter the data as discussed above, verify it, and perhaps even do some of the reconciliations. But then that information will be turned over to the controller who will prepare the financial statements and possibly do the tax return. Sometimes, depending on the size of the organization, there will be a separate person who handles the preparation of the tax return. This could be an internal tax professional if you're large enough or someone from the outside. Because the information supplied by the bookkeeping type person is so critical to the creation of those all important financial statements, and we believe understanding them is critical for those who want to do a good job and advance, we created a short video on understanding the very basic differences between the income statement and the balance sheet, which you can you watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.